Malcolm X, you know. White Malcolm X. I mean, really, if you think about his philosophy, he was for he was for people getting off of welfare, for people not accepting handouts from the government, for people working, pulling their own weight, getting off of alcohol and other substances. I mean, it was really he was more dangerous than a Democrat. Well, my point is that that I don't think I'm not impressed by politicians who espouse compassion. Right. Compassion denotes noblesse oblige. Right. They'll give you something out of the goodness of their heart. My, my feeling is that the people using their great multitudes have the political power to extract what they right. believe to be just. Because who has ever gotten anywhere from begging and asking? It's been taken. And it doesn't necessarily in this day and age mean violence. It means by, as you say, a show of force politically. If uh, I've always said that if blacks and Latinos are upset, and my being an African American, if we're upset about Mayor Giuliani's policies, it doesn't have to be violent. Merely we can say we won't shop in the city anymore. It's called democracy. You know, you just co collectively say to yourselves, we are not going to shop there anymore. We will work there, we will make money, and we will leave. But when, when the conservatives and the CCC members talk about big government and talk about the fact that your taxes are, your, your tax too much, they notice they never want to talk about national public priorities right. because then you might decide that this is a worthy spending goal. They play on the lack so they, of critical thought. So they the make population. well. They play on race. They right. make they cultivate the idea sotto voce that all your tax money is going to blacks. Right, and actually welfare is uh, deceived by whites more than it is blacks in numbers. But I mean, it's just a political play of words that it all goes to minorities. And you know, if you want to talk about welfare, I think you touched on it a while ago. I mean, uh, Mayor Giuliani removed 2.5 billion in tax liabilities to corporate people. I mean, I have. A business that operates in Manhattan. I couldn't absolve myself of taxes. <laughs> you know, the, so so there is corporate welfare that's unspoken. Yeah, well, that's that's a point. But these all of these disputes over taxation are subject to the democratic process, right. and they're not really arguments about taxation. They're argument about uh, arguments about what we want to buy. And I think your meal analogy was great. Uh, I think that really hit home because a lot of people were still calling and they couldn't understand the point you were trying to drive home. And I think the analogy that you did about the meal and uh, everyone chipping in was just great. I think that stopped the calls. Well, no, they're psychologically blocked. It's right. so simple to understand this as a matter of priorities, but right. who knows? Exactly. I, I appreciate the call, though. And I have to call you back at 7 to talk to you about our issue that we spoke about prior. Oh, really? Yes. All right, call me so back after I will the call. And I wanted to say one thing. You are hilarious because you know the fellow Bobby that you were mocking? Uh, maybe I, I was too insulting to him. No, but I mean, I didn't know for a second while I was holding on the line, whether it was you or him at one point when you did the impersonations. Well, God gave me one gift, the ability to insult people. Okay. I don't know if that's a good gift. Well, that can be good. If it's used properly, it's good. And something about him I didn't like. I thought he was overtly insulting to me. Why shouldn't he get his own medicine? Right, and that was good. And I just, again, I just wanted to commend you on that, that first exchange with the two gentlemen. I'm glad you like that. I, I think we'll play that back someday when I'm sick. You really should, because that was great, great radio. You should I, send some to yeah. Sliwa and let him see how it's done. Well, I do believe that in doing the kind of work I do here, I'm an, uh, I'm an enduring embarrassment to all those people over there who can't do it right and also you come to work you know that's I mean, right they don't, they don't yeah. know the concept of preparation and that's work correct is. this is hard work their their jobs on radio are afterthoughts right you have to be studious you have to put in time and you have to then come with some sense of rationale and then you bring it you prepare it and you put it on there and it's very palatable for us those of us that think rationally and i just think it's a good hard work and i think your station should commend you thank you doug i appreciate and it. i will I call you back at 705 on all right i'll be waiting okay no reason to, no need to wait till 705 we'll do it right after seven okay beautiful all right thanks okay, Jay, great thanks i think he's booking a guest for me all right you want to hear this i'll get back to the telephone pataki vetoes bill to pay cabbies lotto winnings Governor Georgie e. Pataki vetoed a bill yesterday intended to award a Long Island cab driver $7.4 million in lotto winnings, even though he threw out the winning ticket. Mr. Pataki said the cab driver, Howard Reed of Hempstead, may well be able to prove he bought one of the four winning tickets to a $70 million lotto jackpot on May 31, 1997. But the governor nonetheless rejected a bill directing the lottery division to pay Mr. Reed $7.4 million. The award would have been less than one quarter of $70 million, or... 17 and a half million because Mr. Reed chose a lump sum payment option when he bought the ticket. Among other things, the lottery should be afforded an opportunity to engage in an objective and meaningful review of the evidence presented before it's required to pay a sizable lotto first prize award to a claimant 
who does not possess a valid winning ticket, Mr. Pataki wrote. The bill does not mention Mr. Reed by name, but it includes provisions that would apply only in his circumstances, including the involvement of a prize exceeding $5 million, and the documentation, he says, proves beyond a doubt that he bought the winning ticket. Mr. Reed bought $130 worth of tickets to that draw. Imagine this guy spent 130 bucks on lotto tickets. Then he wins, and he throws out the ticket. But 130 bucks, he's, imagine waiting on line behind him. Uh, those guys must be happy that he threw out the ticket. He bought $130, $130 worth of tickets to that drawing, and he had a receipt showing the numbers of all the tickets he bought. He also kept his play cards and can produce a statement from the lottery vendor who also says that Mr. Reed bought the winning ticket. Mr. Reed said he did not notice he had the winner before throwing out the tickets. You, buy a hundred, you, you throw out $130 on lotto tickets, and you don't check to see if you won. Mr. Reed's lawyers were not immediately available to talk about the governor's veto. Mr. Reed's telephone number is not listed. All right, uh, this is Jay Diamond, and I'll say hello to John in Westchester. Hi, John. Hi. Hey, big boy. You want to bend over? All right. I don't think so. George is in Queens. This is Jay Diamond. Hi. I think that uh, the caller who said he didn't like paying 50% uh, in taxes... Speak it, up. It is valid because... Uh, let's say you make $100,000, uh, uh, Jay. I need you to speak up. And if you pay 50000 of that to the government, you're left with $50,000, and you really can't cover very much in, in today's economy. So I think that really part of the issue is developing a tax system that is fair. Well, first of all, it's first not of all, fair nobody if who, you're paying 50% okay. or even more. I was under the impression that the highest rates are 35% or so, so I don't know They're if you're paying 40%, 50. but if you're living in New York, you get the blessing of about a 10 or 11% right. rate for New York and right. New York City. No, 10, is it 10% for the state? Are you sure? No, the state is about 7 uh -huh. and New York City is about 4 right, but let me ask you about question. a combined rate okay. of 51%. Again, I don't want to fall into this trap of talking about taxes because I earnestly believe that it's a question of priorities. My, to wit, if... Uh, if, you're, if your child were kidnapped, and you know for a fact if you paid the ransom, you'd get them back, would you refuse to pay the ransom? No, of course not. All right, so that would be a priority to pay that money. And, it's a pri and education is a super, right, so wait, super so priority. So the, the point I'm making to you is that the, the amount of tax money you pay is really not the issue. What's at issue is what we decide as citizens we want to buy. Don't you think that's a better way of looking at it? What we decide as members of the country we want to buy... But you get into the area of whether the government can do the best with the money. And sometimes they do an absolutely lousy job with the money. It's in the people's interest to do a good job. I don't see it as the government. I see the government as a reflection of the people. I talk about the people. You talk about the government. And can I just that reflects one, our different points of can view. Can I mention one point? Uh, what do you call Clinton wants to spend $15 billion on education. And maybe one bill out of many bills that he's talked about. He doesn't have a clue whether the $15 billion is going to be used that really will benefit the kids in the classrooms. But here he's got this thing, I'm going to throw $15 billion at him. You don't, you don't really hear yourself. You don't hear, you make any excuse to hold on to that money because you don't recognize any public priority. And when you finally concede, if I can beat you up enough where you actually concede that there is a legitimate public priority, then you say, well, but it won't be used for that. They'll steal it. No, I'm not saying... Listen to what I think. I'm not saying... I think wrong. there are valid public priorities. If they're important enough to you, you'll be eager to pay for them. And number two, the only reason why you, you... Once you are finally beat up to the point where you have to admit that there are legitimate public priorities, you say, well, but we'll never get to do them anyway. Anything to hold on to that money. No, but wait, I'm not really saying that. No, and really let me tell you something that. else. No, 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 no more. Now it's me. Now listen to me. Yes, sir. You make $100,000. How many people who make $100,000 actually pay 50 in taxes? Or don't they really pay something like 34? All right, even let's take 34. So why do you say 50 well, un until I show you that you're, you're wrong? Let's say it is $34,000. That's still a lot of money. You've got to agree to that. That's Listen to me carefully. A tremendous amount of money. You go to the supermarket and you buy, you buy yourself a steak, some ears of corn, some lettuce for salad, maybe some chicory, a mesclun salad if you really want to get... It's a lot of money to buy food, but you want the food, right? Yes, sir. This is not about the taxes. It's about your priorities, okay. what you want to buy. When, there... How many things that you buy do you get for free? Uh, no, nothing. So wait a minute. Sure. Is it about spending money, or is it about getting what you feel you need? 
our national discussion had better be about what we decide as a community of citizens is important to us. Education. And then it's not that hard to spend the money. Education. No, but you've important. got an excuse there, too, because Housing you say, okay, yes, it's all very important, but they'll throw it out. They won't wait. They won't spend it on that. So well, I'll tell you what. Hold on to the money. You're right. You win. Randis oh. win. Will only, you tell you what. You build that super highway with the money you got in your pocket. Let me ask you this. No, I have no more patience for this is nonsense. There, is it possible I wasted a whole day on this work. Because of the, tax, the taxing system that we have, that there are people... Uh, such as the man who ran for president a number of years ago is not paying a single penny. Listen to me, I'm not for I don't. It's not about taxes. I won't discuss taxes anymore. The whole premise that you talk about is ignorant. You're an utterly, uh, uh, you are a propagandized automaton. You're not a man. You oh. don't get it. You're not smart enough to get it. You don't get it. I tried to put it to you in the starkest of terms, but emotionally you can't swallow it because you're afraid to swallow it because you know it's the truth. It is not about taxes. It's hey, about I, priorities. I have to feel you're not being fair. I really do. Well, then the world isn't fair in the randest world, in the randest model oh, that you covet. I, I saw that movie, Fountainhead, and I didn't think that much of it. George, this yeah. is not an argument about taxes. If you need something badly enough, if you value it as, a public, as an ideal for yourself, you'll spend the money. You're right. This whole debate that our nation it's faces... It's about greed, I'm right? trying to yeah. talk to you. It's not about greed. No, you're just so simple you can't understand it. No offense. It's about a national debate on what matters to the American people. If something matters to you enough, you don't object to spending money on it. So the amount of money is secondary. The public goal that is to be achieved is primary. But what if, it's what a, if they uh, determined that 85% was necessary it's not they. to achieve? It's, it's not they, it's we. We. The whole we but, 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 no, no. 85% no, 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 I want you to listen education. to me. No, 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 you don't get How it. How would we survive? All right, it is not about, the fact that you see it as they rather than we is, is, demonst is, is a demonstrable reason why I can never get through to you much as I try, and I do care to try, but it's frustrating. I'll never make you understand it. You see, this is what it is with you. Every public priority to you is a they. Every private priority to you, George, is a we, because you, you are alienated from the the, the vast multitudes of your fellow citizens, you only recognize the we as you. So any, any, any money that you have to pay for they, for them, you see as illicit. So you don't recognize a we public priority. I'm trying to talk to you. You don't recognize a public priority. That's emotionally, I can never make you understand it. But I understand it. We, we, the vast majority of us do pay taxes. Okay, you're right. I apologize. I'm wrong. Sorry. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Couldn't get through to him. Do we have any more commercials? All right, everybody hang tight, please. I don't think I'm ever going to talk about this again. Uh, because I don't think George is a bad guy, but he's, I, I, the people are so thick. I don't, there might come a time when I say, I don't want to spend money on this road. I don't want to spend money on these schools. I don't want to spend money on this uh, anti-pollution uh, super fund. I don't want to do it. That's not a legitimate priority to me. I don't care if I drown in the pollution. I'm not interested. I'm 94 years old, and I don't want to pay for public education for kids I'll never live to, to see or relate to. I just don't want to do it. That is a legitimate debate. You're free to say that. But to, to see this only in terms of I'm spending money. Money is meaningless if there's nothing you don't want to buy. Money only becomes important when you desire something, when you want something, and you get it with money. So our national debate isn't about whether how much, what percentage you'll keep. It's about what we want to do as a nation. And yet, the people can't understand. You see the frustration that I meet with today. We have to decide what we want to do as a community of citizens. If we want to do nothing, keep all your money. If we want to do a lot, we have to pay for it. But the argument isn't about spending money. It's about what purpose is sufficient for us to part with our money. But, I don't know, maybe I'm nuts. This is Jay Diamond on News Talk 1050, WEVD New York. Hi. I'm David Oreck. I make the 8-pound Oreck XL Hotel vacuum. You know, I've been hearing a lot of talk about the Internet, and frankly, I www dot don't get it. But my son Bruce says I www dot got to be there. So I put my catalog on the Internet. If you want the code, just call me at 1-800-989-4200. That's 1-800-989-4200. And I'll www dot give it to you.
If you're a business owner, the head of a human resources department, or an employee who's just tired of your health care coverage, listen carefully because it's important that you know HIP is not just medical centers anymore. That's right. Thousands of participating doctors in private practice now accept HIP, which means you can pick a doctor the way you always have. HIP has doctors in private practice all over New York, in Westchester, on Long Island, in Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island, and the Bronx. So for more information, call this number, 1-888-485-9155. Dial toll-free, 1-888-485-9155. If you're a business owner, the head of a human resources department, or just an employee who's tired of your health care coverage, this could be the thing for you. So write this number down, 1-888-485-9155. HIP is not just medical centers anymore, and that's the point. Can't figure out why you're not sleeping well? Maybe the trouble isn't in your head, it's in your bed. Conventional mattresses create pressure points that make you toss and turn. But now there's a bed guaranteed to give you a better night's sleep. It's the Tempur-Pedic Swedish Mattress. For a free video and sample of this sleep-enhancing material, call 1-888-383-5522. The Tempur-Pedic bed is scientifically designed to eliminate pressure points so you sleep more soundly. Tests show that Tempur-Pedic users toss and turn up to 83% less. Even if you have back or neck problems, Tempur-Pedic can offer unprecedented relief, and that's why over 25,000 doctors and sleep clinics recommend it. For a free sample of this pressure-relieving temper material and a free Better Sleep video, call toll-free 1-888-383-5522. For a better night's sleep, you need a better bed. Call Tempur-Pedic now, 1-888-383-5522. That's 1-888-383-5522. Jay Diamond! Hello, this is Bing Crosby. Wouldn't you want to become a part of California's moral emphasis program for traffic safety just by reminding your family and friends to obey traffic laws? The practice of courtesy and moral responsibility when we drive can and will save needless highway deaths and injuries. Be morally right. Drive safely and thank you. Thank you, Bing. And this is Jay Diamond on News Talk 1050 WEVD New York. Just a couple of brief notes, then back to the telephones in the waning moments. First of all, thank you, Akenda Howes, for filling in on short notice for Bill Janoff today. It really did a great job, and it's nice that we had to trick you, though, to get you to condescend to visit us again in the control room, something she used to do all the time, Dennis, before she became a big shot. Remember she used to come in here and listen? Now we have to actually trick her. All right, all right, all right, all right. Anyway, thank you, Akenda. And uh, the mayor, the city council yesterday, and the mayor are going to give themselves raises. Isn't that nice? The mayor's salary is going to... Go, by, uh, go up $30,000 from $165,000 to $195,000, and the council members are going to get $90,000 a year, a rise from $19,500. And uh, do the mayor and the council members really understand the economic challenges that confront hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers daily? Do they realize the continuing impact of the 1995 25-cent increase in the subway fare? Do they comprehend the shortage of affordable housing or the critical need for affordable child care. The uh, minimum wage remains stuck at $5.15 an hour. Elderly and disabled individuals who receive supplemental security income have fallen deeper into poverty because the state supplement has not kept pace with inflation. Welfare recipients, two-thirds of whom are kids, haven't seen a benefit increase since 1990. Workfare participants had to sue the city to even get the minimum wage, let alone the prevailing wage they initially were entitled to by law. They get a buck an hour. The commission that recommended the pay raises claims that they are needed to help public officials keep pace with inflation and with the raises given to union employees. Really? First, the pay hikes approved by the council yesterday are far above the inflation rate. Second, municipal workers represented by District Council 37 got a 0% raise during the first two years of their latest contract. So did cops and firefighters. And teachers, by the way. Not hard to keep pace with that. Teachers, cops, firefighters, District Council 37 all had to take zero pay increases. The mayor gives himself $30,000 in increase, and the city council gets $19,500. New York State has the largest income gap between the poor and the wealthy in the United States. Even the gap between the middle class and the wealthy is growing. The solution can't be to raise the salary of elected officials while ignoring the needs of the working people they are supposed to serve. Those are quotes from an op-ed by Mark Dunlay, who is executive director of the Hunger Action Network of New York in today's Daily News. You should think about it. And here's another thing for guaranteed stupidity in New York City. The police department has a new policy that took effect this week, 
and it has some officers wondering whether poppy seed bagels are now as off limits to them as heroin, graft, or consorting with organized crime figures. The department defended the new policy. Other, uh, listen to this, poppy seeds, for example, have not been specifically banned. When you take the drug test, he said, we ask you what foods you've eaten. See, what they want to do is, they want, they, they don't want to, they want to take away excuses for cops who test positive for drugs, and if you eat poppy seeds, then you'll test positive for, what is it, coke or something, because they've come from the poppy plant, some drug. When you take the drug test, uh, Michael Markman, the chief of personnel, said, we ask you what foods you've eaten, what prescription drugs you're taking, and what over-the-counter medications you're taking. When you tell us poppy seeds, we ask, I swear to you, I'm not lying, he, when you tell us poppy seeds, we ask how many? What is a, a, a cop supposed to do? Count the poppy seeds on a bagel? This guy says, when, when you tell us you've been eating poppy seeds, we ask how many? And then we tell the lab, and they know how many poppy seeds cause certain levels on the test results. So if you're a police officer and you're going to eat a poppy seed bagel, count those poppy seeds and make sure you get it right. And there might be 7,010 rather than 7,014. This is Jay Diamond, and JR is in Queens on WEVD. Hello, JR. Hi. Hey, Jay. How are you doing? Good. Listen. Going uh, fast uh, now because it's at the end. Yeah, you have a great show, and I, I re I, it's a pleasure listening to you. I just want to say you. something. Um, the topic that you're discussing in regards to priority, yeah, uh, what people want to spend their money, I think people think like that because they become a product of their own environment. They want to stay in their own selfish world, and they do not care what happens outside their door. No, but I disagree with you because it, it's selfish for them to understand that they also have public priorities. Yeah, they, they have... It's not selfish. In other words, there's a, there's a benefit to an individual if he has a good paved street. There you go. These people are just unconscious. They don't understand that there is a private benefit in a public priority. But, you see, the way they see it is they have, to me, they, 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 would, they want the street to be repaired, but they don't want to pay the money to repair it. <laughs> well... Because the, because the argument is never framed as I framed it today in terms of a public, what is, what is our nation's priorities? It's always framed in terms of, yeah, we're going to let each guy spend his own money. I, I know what to do with my money better than the government and those communists. I, 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 could, I know I, I want to keep my money, not, but, but you keep your money. You can't build an air force. You can't okay. hire an army. You can't build a road. You can't build a school. Okay. So, it's, so, of course, it's absurd. The it, argument should be about public priorities right. and what is a legitimate public priority, and then we fund it. Oh, you got it. What's important to us as a community of citizens? Is a, is a road important to us? Then we have no trouble paying for it. If, is a school important to us? Then we have no difficulty making a disbursement. Well, you see, that's why we have so many problems in health care, because they don't think it's important enough. So everybody wants... That's true. You're right. Everybody wants to deal with... I've got to run. Doctors. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jr. I've Thank just got to run. I want to get these people on. Uh, Danny's in Brooklyn. you got to go fast. Jay, I admit to us giving up on the notion of government as a hub of the wheel of community, but I am trying to understand you, and I listen to you, but I don't think myself it's as simple as the government is a reflection of the people, because did the people drop the A-bomb twice? Did the people make war in Vietnam or Waco? Or yeah, Kosovo? they did. You think so? They put people there who did that. Did the people do and let me tell you, let me, let me point something out to you. That, that there were vast changes in what happened in, those, in many of those instances because the people reflected their will at the polls. You might not agree with their decision, but that's true. But this is all subject to the political process, to the will of the people. And essentially, the argument is about what we consider to be important as a nation, not about whether we, how much money we'll keep. Danny, I've got to run. Okay, Jay. Thank you. All right. Gene is calling in Brooklyn. This is Jay Diamond. Hello, Gene. Hi. Hi. Um, I was just wondering... Um, the unemployment rate, uh, it isn't being allowed to reach 0%. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering, I mean, in the sense that the government, the governmental policies... Uh, I'll think about that. Thank you very much. Marty is on Long Island. Hello, Marty. Hi. Hi, Jay. Hi. I've been listening to you for many years. It's the first time I'm calling. It's an honor to speak to you. Well, it's an honor to talk to you, too. Thank you. I've been... Uh, I agree with you 110%, as O.J. Simpson would say, <laughs> on your public concerns and private concerns. I felt this way. Uh, I describe it as, as a national purpose or a national mission that has to underlie all our actions. And I think that's what you're referring to. But there comes a time, a practical time, when, when we, a democracy, has to actually get this money from a guy like Bill Gates. And I'm, I'd like to ask, 
regardless of where we set the bar, whether it be... All right, I have to go. I'm sorry. Well, you have to look at the clock. Thank you, Marty. I'll put you on hold. We'll talk off the air. I want to thank everybody who participated and who listened. See you tomorrow at 4 p.m. here on News Talk 1050 WEBD New York. Have a good night. This is Jay Diamond. Thanks. The Talk Station. News Talk 1050 WEBD New York. The talk continues straight ahead. It's 7 o'clock.